Hi, this is Mats from BitSquid. In this tutorial I want to show you how to get model files from Maya or 3D Studio Max into the BitSquid engine. Uh, I will be using the Maya to demonstrate the, during this demonstration, uh, but you can, we also supply exporters for, um, for uh, 3D Studio Max and animation exporters for Motion Builder in form of a Python script. So if you look in the uh, BitSquid distribution folder, you will have a, a, a folder called exporters where all the binaries are for different releases of uh, Maya and Max. So just copy the relevant uh, uh, plugin file into the correct folder for your uh, modeling package of choice and you should be good to go. Right, so uh, here I have a simple scene that's set up in Maya that contains uh, two units. A unit is uh, sort of a fundamental building block that you can use to create levels in the BitSquid engine. So uh, you will spawn multiple instances of these units and create uh, environments from them. Uh, this Maya scene contains two different units. There is a, a base tile that is sort of a, a tile that you can clone to create a, a sort of a floor slab. And on top of that, there's a door. There's a door unit, a door uh, mesh to, that uh, has a little keyhole on it that the player will be able to unlock from within the game. And I want to show you how to export this uh, this model from Maya and get it into the BitSquid engine. And uh, this uh, scene has been authored uh, inside Maya. And while it's been done in here, the textures for this unit is actually in the project folder itself, uh, in the BitSquid project. So if I bring up Photoshop here, you can see that here's the textures that's used by the scene, and there's two of them. Uh, there's a diffuse texture and a, a self-illumination texture. And these two textures are located below the product, my product folder. So, and they're saved in uh, direct draw surface format, DDS file format, uh, which is the file format that the engine is, use, is using for all the textures that you want to bring into the game uh, because it supports all the features that we want to, to be able to, to represent in the engine. It supports cube maps and mip map levels and stuff like that. It's really fundamental to, to building a 3D game. And uh, in, a, in, order to, to work with, uh, in order to work with DDS files in Photoshop, you probably need to grab the uh, NVIDIA Texture Tools plugin, which is available from this website for free. So just grab that and install it into, into Photoshop and you should be able to work directly with DDS files inside Photoshop. Right, so if I bring back uh, Maya here, um, let's have a look at this scene. So this, uh, this door unit, this door unit is actually consisting of several meshes in this scene. Uh, so let's have a look at what what's actually made up of. At the root of the of the unit, there's so something we use we usually refer to as a root point, which is typically just a transform or a group or something. And below this transform, uh, there there can be one or more mesh representations of the object. In this particular instance, we have uh, we have several log steps for this object, and. Let me just show you some of, of those so you can have a look at them for yourself. Um, if I bring out this, uh, this low level LOD here, uh, and there's also a very simple shadow, cast, shadow casting mesh inside the unit that's sort of parented to this, to this root point here. So let's have a look at those differences here. So the high quality mesh at the highest LOD step actually has nice chamfering and stuff to to show a little bit of extra detail, whereas this next load step has gotten rid of quite a lot of, of detail, so it will be easier, it will be cheaper to render when uh, not as much detail is, is needed. And of course, the, this very low res representation uh, can actually produce quite a nice shadow silhouette for the object when we're rendering shadows, so we don't have to uh, render quite as many triangles when doing the shadows. Uh, so. This is, a, this is an example of, of why you would want to place uh, a root point at the root of your level. That means that if I were at the root of your unit, 
it means that if I if I move the root point, all those other lod steps and shadow representations will actually move along with the with the object inside the level editor or inside the engine. So uh, that's a, a good way to structure your scenes. I'm just going to undo a couple of steps here and bring the scene back together. And uh, I'm going to to select this select this model and I want to just export this model and not export the the floor tile thing here so I'm just gonna uh, I'm going to choose to export the selected object from this scene not the entire scene and in order to do so I need to select all the objects inside the scene that I need to export not just the root point itself but also the underlying meshes and a really quick and easy way to do that is to select hierarchy from the edit menu that selects everything in the scene uh, now, our tangent here is that we actually, the bit square engine actually expects the scene to be used set, the set axis as the up vector in the world. Uh, so you need to change your preferences inside Maya uh, from this screen. If you go to Window, Settings, Preferences, and Preferences, and Settings, there's a World Coordinate System setting where you can select up axis to be Z instead of Y. Uh, you typically also want to work in, in uh, use meters as, as units because the engine uses meters and that makes it easier to sort of debug things if you want to look at coordinates as, uh, as the reporter within the engine uh, compared to the Maya scene. You don't have to set this because you, we, if you, you choose to author a scene in a different uh, linear unit setting it will actually export correctly anyway. Uh, but it's, it's a nice feature anyway. To, it's a good practice to set this to meters if you're able to. You can actually do that from the, if you go into the file new scene option in Maya, uh, there's a little box here which you can click to to set options for new scenes that are created and in there you can set the linear working unit to meter to have every new scene in Maya uh, start up with meters. Alright, so we want to export this uh, all these objects that are selected into the BitSquid engine. Um, if I just go to the export selection menu option here, it will bring up a file, uh, file export dialog box. And I need to go to my BitSquid project. In this case, I'm going to export this into the Hamilton project. And here we go. There's a folder here called units. I'm going to export it to units demo. And I'm actually going to create a new folder here for this uh, for this unit because there's going to be some additional files in here, not just the mesh data, but also settings for the unit and the material data and stuff like that. So I'm going to create a new folder here and call it demo door. And in this folder, I will export my file as demo door. And just make sure that you the file type here is set to bits good intermediate. Uh, and you should be able to export the scene like this. Now, if everything works correctly, you will have a result here at the printout. Uh, and if something went wrong during export, this this uh, field will actually be read instead. And you can use you can open the script editor by clicking this button to look, show the log for for the output and see what went wrong. But everything went went okay, went fine here. It's black. So uh, I've exported this mesh data. And uh, now let's import this mesh data into the engine. Uh, yeah, so let's minimize those and bring up the BitSquid tool center. Now, there are two things I need to do. Uh, first thing I need to do is to bring in the textures that I've used for my scene and sort of set up properties for them. And as you remembered from, the, from earlier, uh, I actually saved my textures directly into the pro product folder as uncompressed DDS files and the thing to do now is that you need to tell the engine how to compress those DDS files depending on target platform and stuff like that so you save memory and in order for those textures to be available inside the engine you need to set those texture properties up you do that using the texture manager application that's available here in the tool center if I click texture manager it will bring up the texture manager application and this view here will show all the textures that have not yet uh, have, have features, uh, have uh, properties defined on them. And I need to go through these textures and select the compression properties for them. Uh, DXT1 is probably fine for this one actually. And 
I want to use the existing MIP maps for this one though. Whereas this one is, yeah, that's a DXT1 file and I think I probably want to, that's fine as well, and I, I want to generate MIP maps automatically for this, uh, for this, for this texture, so I don't, I don't check use existing MIP for this one. Uh, and I save all those textures. And I can close the texture manner after that. They, the textures are now available to use within the engine. And they will be compressed for the target platform that you choose to run the, the engine on automatically for you. Uh, and now let's uh, try let's bring in the bring in the model file that we exported from Maya. And we do this using the unit editor. And I click this to bring it up. And what I want to do is I want to import a mesh into the project. And uh, this content browser thing will be populated by all the available meshes that don't have a unit associated with them. And here's my exported demo door mesh file. Let me just bring that in. And it will now ask me if I want to use an existing material setup file for this, for this unit. And in this case, I don't have any, any any materials that I want to share with this unit. Uh, I just want to create a new one. So I can press cancel to create a new material for this unit. Here we go. So in this panel here, you can see the scene representation that of the object that was objects that were exported from Maya. And in this part, we have a, an empty field of renderables. And for in order for anything to be visible at all inside the engine, you need to bring meshes from this this panel here into the renderables column. I'm going to keep it simple for this for this tutorial. I'm just going to bring the the highest quality load step in into a renderables into the renderables column. And as you can see, it's it's set to be visible here, so that will be visible. And I also want to bring in the shadow mesh, the low the lowest possible representation that doesn't have any textures or anything on it. That's just a shadow caster bring that in and that's not going to be visible so I click this here to turn that off but I want it to cast shadows so one of these messages is visible and the other one cast shadows and just say that there right uh, I'm gonna start the level editor to show this unit inside a level and let me just bring that onto the screen there I'm gonna open up uh, an empty level here so I can bring in my unit into it. And in the scenery browser inside the level editor, my unit should already be available here. So if I type demo door here, you can see the unit there and there's a silhouette representation of it down here. And let me just select that. And I can right click on a point in the world and spawn it on top of that point. So I'll spawn that unit there and I'll spawn another one here as well, actually. There we go. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't have actually have a, a material defined for it yet. So let's uh, set that up for this unit. I'm just going to right click on the unit and tell it to open the material into in the material editor. And let me bring that in here. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. There we go. So let me close the scenery browser as well for for simply just get a bit of room here. And if I move the camera there, I should be able to have them both in view at the same time. So these are all the materials that were exported from the Maya scene. And these, uh, are, these are using the same names as, as the nodes that were exported. And for this particular one, I want to sort of edit this material and bring in the textures that were added to the project earlier. So the textures for this one is gonna, I'm gonna use a diffuse map and also a self illumination map. Now these uh, op these uh, options in this in this area here are actually driven by the current shader. Uh, it's driven by metadata in the shader files, so you can you can expose properties to the and and layers to the material editor uh, directly from your shader files. And if I check stuff in here in this column here, I get I get properties that I can edit in in this part here. And let's just pick the diffuse map for this unit from the available ones. Let's bring in the content browser and this one is called John Tile Door Lock Locked something. So there's a diffuse texture here. That's the one I, I used in Maya. I bring that in. And I also bring in the self-illumination map on top of that as well. 
And as you can see, I can directly see the changes reflected in the level editor here. And I can also tweak the settings a little bit. If I move the camera, I can see it's a little bit too glossy for my taste there. That, that doesn't look right. So let's uh, bring the glossiness amount down a bit. Maybe the specular mask down a bit as well. Get a more realistic approach there. And I also wanted to sort of shine a little bit more. So I bring up this self-illumination multiplier here. So I get a nice sort of shine to it there. That looks about right, actually. So I'm just going to save that material. And uh, yeah, that's how you get uh, units into the into the engine. And uh, this actually, if I spawn this unit again, um, it's all it's all set up correctly now, so it should be working. Uh, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck.